very biodiverse orchard, but not all of the wildlife uh, in the orchard is equally welcome. In fact, some of it we take active measures to destroy. Um, for example, the tortrix moth, which is responsible for destroying um, approximately a third of our agrimot russet apples this year, and it particularly seems to have destroyed the larger fruits. Uh, what you often get is, uh, you know, with, that, with agrimot russet, that's a short stalk, or a short stalk, and you'll often get two apples growing together like this. You have to pick them very carefully with a special sort of manoeuvre to stop, otherwise you pick one and the other one drops off. But anyway, but where they grow together with very short stalks, um, uh, it creates a, a space where certain pests, I mean, you see earwigs, wood lice, and uh, this horrible tortrix moth caterpillar, which it doesn't penetrate very deep, it just uh, grazes around chewing uh, this. Of course, it's completely unsaleable. I mean, there's absolutely no, there is absolutely no point whatsoever saying, oh, people won't mind buying those, so they'll just cut that out. They won't. They'll take a look at that and they'll walk away and they'll tell your friends that you sell filth and uh, they won't even come back to your stall again. Um, the reason why we've got such a severe um, attack of uh, tortrix moth this year, I think, is because of our extremely light insecticide programme. We only used, I know I'd like to say a lot about, about pest control, uh, but there's so much misinformation and lies uh, around that you, know, you have to say something. And in order to get a clean crop, you need to control pests uh, to some extent. And this one in there, so there's another one. We have to be so careful. You see, uh, you know, a customer buys a bag of apples in good faith and they get home and they see something like this and they may well tell all their friends. Um, and on the other hand, we're also confronted with people who think it's wicked of us to use any, um, any method of pest control. Oh, just sing, sing to the trees and leave nature to herself and everything will be all right. And people don't mind spots on their apples. <laughs> well, they do, actually. Um, and uh, anyway, the reason we, uh, we used a very light pesticide program this year, that's a bit of um, a wasp damage or maybe hornet damage there, uh, was because we had a really, 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 really major problem of um, uh, red spider mite. Uh, these two lumps here, by the way, these are caused by bites of the, um, the ground chafer. We had a big problem with massive, massive hordes, tens of thousands of ground chafer beetles climbing up uh, out of the earth and flying into the trees and um, biting the apples. Those that didn't die um, immediately and rot and fall off. Uh, oh, this can't be sold either, this one. I don't care because there's a ladybug there. Uh, they, they developed these ugly lumps on them, which made them pretty much unsaleable. We finally found the right pesticide to hit those uh, nasty things this year, and we, we knocked them out to a large extent, but not before they'd damaged a lot of apples. Uh, then we had a red spider mite problem, which I know a lot of other growers had this year. And um, uh, red spider mite is particularly bad in hot summers. Uh, it's also quite bad uh, if you overuse insecticide, but I know a grower who doesn't use any insecticide at all, and they had a, a big red spider mite problem this year, so it was a bad year for it. And um, often, you know, all the books say the best thing to do with red spider mite is just to leave things completely well alone and allow um, uh, the, the good bugs to build up. And we've got a massive, massive load of ladybirds in the orchard this year because our insecticide program has been so incredibly light. Uh, we did use a specific red spider mite uh, uh, spray later in the year, quite legally, and only one application about four or five weeks ago and it knocked out the red spider mite but not before they'd done a lot of damage um, but it, it meant that we didn't spray against the codling moth this year which we normally do based on the findings of the codling moth traps so we didn't spray against codling moth this year because of the red spider mite problem if you're following me so far we've had a codling moth problem maggots in the apples for the first time it's not a terrible problem we just have to look out very carefully for it but it looks as though by my reckoning uh, it looks as though probably the codling moth spray may have been controlling the tortrix moth, which has grown out of proportion and has destroyed approximately a third of our Eglamot russet crop this year. Um, which, you know, if I tell you that uh, we have uh, 60 trees of Eglamot russet, and ordinarily they'd yield. Um, about 15 kilograms of fruit per tree, and we're selling it at three pounds a kilogram. Uh, and if I tell you it's destroyed a third of the crop, you can understand, you can understand, you're being a little bit fed up about that, can't you now? Uh, so yes, we have a lot of wildlife in the orchard, but not all of it is welcome, and I will be studying um, the uh, ways and means of destroying tortrix moth. 
And I've just picked an apple at random and yeah, destroyed. Looks fine from below, destroyed by Tortrix Moth. What a bummer. I wish I had that Joni Mitchell round here. Spots on my apples indeed. I'd like her to write a song about the benefits of crop protection. Are you listening, Miss Mitchell? By the way, I loved the circle game. 